All right, we're at LKQ in Toledo. Yeah, I figured I'd take a look at this, some stuff out here. We got this uh, Crown Vic. This was an ex-cop car. P71. And it still has the dome light. And the felony floors. This is, uh, the cover is missing, but this would have had the uh, cover on it. This is the uh, detective light or whatever would have went there. It has the older style dome light, which is shocking. The vinyl back seats. Crown Victoria. Police interceptor. And then you got this old 90s Taurus. Just out of curiosity, how many miles does this have? Because for some reason, I seem to be finding a lot of these with high miles. Ouch. 251,000. Not quite as many as that other one I found, but pretty high miles. Get the older airbag steering wheel. Apparently, these were uh, very unsafe. I always liked this steering wheel, though. Taurus LX. Uh, what's left of a Mercury Villager? I've driven a couple of these. I kind of like them. Had the blue interior. And no airbag. This is an older one, obviously. Oh, it's got the things that go back around. Not a whole lot left of this one. It's pretty clapped out. Oh, uh, yeah, still kind of neat. The door don't slide anymore. <laughs> These are actually made by Nissan and Ford. They collaborated on them and that's how you got the Nissan Quest. And the uh, Mercury Villager. Uh, yeah. 135,000 miles. Triple A safety. I always thought these seatbelt things were kind of neat. <laughs> oh, yeah. A couple interesting old Fords, I guess. And here's another gem from the 90s. The 90s Ford Explorer. This is kind of what really started the whole SUV craze. Um, but yeah. This one obviously got wrecked. But... Not a whole lot left of it. It is probably 102,000 miles at least. I mean, it's in good shape, surprisingly. But, you know, uh, these are actually based off the Ford Ranger originally, um, before they changed it in the 2000s to more like this style here or that one there. Uh, yeah. Old 90s Ford Explorer. 93 to be exact. Always kind of like these. I like the one after this a little bit more, but this body style is always one of my favorites. And that still works. Ouch. You got the lift gate and the hatch. I think if you go the other way, the hatch opens. Like so. And it was from Michigan, apparently. The amount of Michigan vehicles I see in Ohio is crazy. But yeah, there's the 90s Explorer. Alright, this is pretty much... This is a real classic right here. This is the 80s era Ford LTD. Um, this 
one looks like it was in pretty nice shape at one point. Um, uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the, the first generation of the Ford Panther body. That came out in like 82 or 7. No, it came out in 79. But this one is freaking immaculate. I'm surprised it hasn't been picked over more. like the steering wheel. Well, this was when Ford was doing this weird thing. And your horn was on the column. Really weird. Really heavy column shift. Not bad. Someone took the dash out of it for some reason. I really like these older Panther bodies. They really grew on me. Just because they're, you know, becoming a classic in a way. Not many people really appreciate these things. But the ones that do, they know exactly what they have. And this one had to get a center thing there. I do believe I got that bad. That one I don't I don't have that one. This had the older tail lights. Actually, yeah, this is the only body style that had those tail lights. So nineteen eighty Ford L T D crown big. There's another L T D badge. This plush carpet though. Oh yeah, this one was pretty nice. I do believe the LTD was the top package for these. But yeah, see what else we can find out here. And this is a Sable wagon. This is the last of the uh, station wagons that Ford made, honestly. I don't think they made anything after this. Dang, that's pretty clean. <laughs> Your Mercury center cap. This is in pretty nice shape, actually, surprisingly. I bet this is probably a lower mile one. Built with pride in Atlanta, Georgia. The back's pretty. It's missing the seat. I don't know what happened there. I mean, it is the junkyard. I wonder if this one has the seat that folds up. It does. There's the donut. I'm going to set that down a minute. Yeah, these had a seat in the back that flipped up. Which you got to... How does this work? Oh, you got to pull up on this. Up on that. And there you go, you got a seat. Pretty neat. Mercury Sable. This is an 03. I think they quit making the wagon in 05 or 06. And these were probably one of the last Fords to have a mechanical odometer like that. 113,000 miles. Kind of low, honestly. And that's probably why it is, that's here. <laughs> I'm not going to fuck with that. Oh yeah, the Mercury Sable Station Wagon. Always kind of like these. Alright, I bet this is something you've probably never seen before. This is the Ford Escape, which is pretty common, but... Uh, there's something about this one that's a little different. Well... Kind of hard to see the engine. For one, it's for sale. For two, it's a manual. Would you believe it? I don't know how many people actually option these with that, but that's kind of neat. I like the color too. 
This is the exact color I think of when I think of first gen Ford Escapes. <laughs> Pretty neat. But yeah, there's that. Alright, this is a second gen Plymouth Voyager from mid 90s. I always really like these second gens. Uh, the first ones, too. These were based off the K car. And actually, this is the last generation to be based off the K car. And it was the first generation to have the airbag. Believe it or not. Can I open this door somehow? There we go. Yeah. Got a bunch of paperwork on the floor. The 94 model Voyager. How many miles does this have? 146. Always really like these vans. If I had to pick a minivan, this would probably be it. It's got the uh, trip computer. This is actually pretty loaded up for a Voyager. Unless I want to rob the whole ignition out of it. <laughs> we got the climate controls here. Actually see how it works. Kind of neat. I don't know. <laughs> the hazards are right here, which is really weird. You go to Turn on your headlights and turn on the hazards instead. <laughs> Dimmer. Let's get the Infinity sound system. This is the short wheelbase. They had the uh, longer one too. I don't know what is going on with this thing. Focus. There we go. Only well, took the. Uh, Pin a star off the back of it. The speaker's dangling. It would have had three rows of seats, but this one's missing one row. These windows. I believe these are actually automatic windows. But some of them were manual. Yeah. Everybody's childhood had one of these, whether they liked it or didn't. Would have been an ashtray over there. The big feather on the ceiling. <laughs> the child lock. <laughs> I like these wheels. So yeah, there's the 94 Voyager. Alright, here we got one of the first generation Buick LeSabers. What was really neat about these is the hood. They do that. And it opens like a Corvette. Kind of cool. But yeah, these had the uh, 3800 fuel injected engine. This one's in not bad shape. The dash is missing. It's got good tires on it. But they look good anyway. With Sabre Limited. If I had to guess, this is probably about a 1990 or an 89. Nope, I was right the first time. Peterson, I found you a parts car. The old... 3800 thing in there. Oh, yeah. Always really like these. These are really nice cars. They drive really nice. This one had 144,000 miles. And the gauge cluster went like that. <laughs> Make it go to 75. And then it's got the heat control here. The radio, which is right here. I might take this book with me. Uh, yeah. Pretty neat. 
in pretty nice shape. I like the blue interior. Reminds me a lot of my Buick Century. I don't know if there's anything brand new off this thing, but it's in nice shape. Oh, yeah, there you go. Buick LeSaber. Alright, we got a couple to go over here. We got this Buick Regal, for starters. This is a 95 Regal. Had leather in here. This one's uh, pretty worn out. Not a whole lot left of it. It has the uh, passenger climate control thing. That's kind of neat. Yeah, pretty worn out. 95 Regal on all donuts. I don't know why they did that, but yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, all donuts, except for one tire. How they managed to do that, I don't know. The freaking hood latch is messed up. How many miles does this have on? 141. Not as much as I thought. And next to that, you got the Chevy Caprice, the B body. This is a uh, honestly GM's last full frame sedan. They also had a wagon version. Um, they call this the bathtub body. Or I call it the bathtub body. This one had the this one had digital gauges. Radio's missing. Had the earbag, which is still over there. These seats are really plush. Not a whole lot left on this one. I mean, actually, there's quite a bit left on this. Surprisingly, this one has not been picked over yet. And this is a Caprice. Classic. Chevrolet. Every time I see one of these cars, I think of the movie Jumanji. They were very, very prevalent in that movie. Um, the cop drove one, and there was a couple others in it. But yeah. This is the car I think of when I think of the movie Jumanji. Then uh, behind me is the Moose is Loose. It's a Cutlass Sierra. Um, has the luggage rack, which a lot of people hate these things. But I like them. I don't know why, but I like them. I just think they look cool. Pretty roomy trunk. This one's actually in fairly solid condition. I mean, there's a little rust down there, but... It's not the worst one I've seen. I like these wheels. Those are really nice. It's a 91. This interior is nice. Love the blue. Let's see if we can open this door again. Oof. Judging by the looks of this car, how many miles do you think this has? Because you would think, oh, it don't have that many miles. It don't have that many miles at all. It's got 218,000. And I love the steering wheel. I really like this. <laughs> got that yeah, original Delco radio. Man, I would love to own one of these. <laughs> really like this one. The hood popped, I think so. Power windows. The body on this is actually pretty nice. Too bad it's in the junkyard. Other than this fender. With the this is not the international series, but they always put that on the high-end ones. It's got the I like these wheels, I really like those. I'm not a big fan of lace wheels, but I like these. Oh. Let's get the 3300 V6, and the battery goes there. You move the freaking strut bar there, and 
battery goes in there just like the Buick I had and the grill's got cracks in it kind of a shame I would have loved to have that grill oh yeah there's the Cutlass Sierra it's not an S or an SL usually they just put it on there but here's the power antenna these things used to be everywhere now you hardly see them anymore at least I don't see them much anymore. Oh yeah. Always like these old A bodies. One of my favorites. But there's that one. So we'll move along to the next stuff. We're going to Ollie for fucking Ranger. Here we got a pair of sad Buicks. I got this. Park Avenue, and then you got a Riviera. This was the last generation of the Buick Riviera I was talking about in the other junkyard video. Um, this is okay. My grandpa had the one that I was talking about in the other video, and he traded it for one of these when this body style came out. And what I remember about that car is he always had it in the garage and it always smelt brand new this one on the other hand is not at all this one's pretty picked clean actually not a whole lot left in it but yeah and over here we got a park avenue what was kind of neat about these is these didn't have the pillar around the door this was a uh, Buick version of what I have basically. The Park Avenue. You could get the Ultra package which had the supercharger. This one obviously is not one of those. And it's pretty nasty in there. Yeah, if it was a supercharge it would say on there. And it would say Ultra on the side. This one does not. This is just your regular Park Avenue. I really like this red interior. I actually almost bought myself one of these at one point. Yeah, it's got one of these coupler deals. I could probably use that. How many miles has this got? 224. Regular tape deck. Park Avenue. Everybody says, oh, these are the same thing as a Buick LeSabre. They're not. These are actually bigger than a LeSabre. That door won't open. I like these wheels. They look pretty nice. The grill's all smashed up. And yeah, there's the Park Avenue. Kind of hard to walk around in here. Rusty Aurora. This back door does not open. What year is this one? 92. Same year as my Oldsmobile. But yeah, there's the two Buicks. Birds of a feather flock together. Alright. A lot of you may remember these things. This is a Geo Metro. Yes. Everybody's car they want when there's a fuel crisis. Always kind of like these. They're kind of neat. I mean, I wouldn't really want to own one, but they're kind of neat for what they are. This one's in pretty nice shape, too. It's a 1990. And it's the five door hatchback one, which I always really like the five door ones. Why? I don't know why I always like these, but I have. Um, my landlord had one of these when I was a kid, and it was red. It was pretty much identical to this one, other than the color. I don't remember what the interior looked like on it, but it was pretty much identical to this. Geo Metro. 
Uh, it says 86,000 miles. Could be legit, could not be legit. I don't know. It's an automatic. Which I think these are a little bit better with the manual. But it's got manual windows though. And the antenna that comes out the top like that. Oh yeah, little Geo Metro. That's a car you don't see hardly ever anymore. Well, here's one of the more unique things I've found here today. This is a 1972 Jeep pickup truck. Yeah. I have never seen one of these. Well, I've seen them, but first time I've ever ran across one in the junkyard. I believe this had the AMC motor. I don't know a whole lot about this, but there's one to the left of the sticker. I want to say it's a freaking AMC motor, but I don't know for sure. It was a, a manual. Check out that gauge cluster. That's cool. You got your turn signal stock, whatever this was. I guess they had a push button start or something like right? that. That's pretty neat. I like this. 72 Jeep truck. Oh, God. You gotta love Ohio. That rust is aided up, though. What a shame. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Don't see that every day. The rest of this is just generic trucks. I've seen this and I was like, holy crap, that's kind of cool.